Cowboys Niners getting you set right here on your home of the Cowboys 105.3 The Fan. No better way to do it than to welcome in the greatness of Tony Casillas, the very first guest tonight to commit and uh, not bail on us. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time. How are you tonight? Top cat. Top cat. Yeah, you know what? I'd never bail on bail out on you guys. And uh, to hear something like Baby Dolls, oh my God. <laughs> you a fan? Reminds me of the 90s, man. Woo! All right, that's a perfect place to start. I want your best Cowboys 90s Baby Dolls style story. What you got for us, Tony? <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know if that is a statute of limitations. All I know is that it was a, it was a decade of entitlement and – Top cat, so my my boy Chris Arnold can relate to this. Mm-hmm. We're entitled because we won a lot of championships. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, the game will come to you. That's that's the best we could put oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let me say this as well. Let's just start this off and, and give you. Tony's a huge total. He's always popping on Sean and RJ show. He listens all the time. And you have a huge fan in this building, and that is our boss, the Hockey Hawk, Gavin Spittle, who wanted me to tell you that he considers you the legitimate. Number one pick in the 1986 draft, not number two, because Bo Jackson never showed up. Well, I appreciate Gavin saying that because he, that is true. And that's every time when someone asks me, well, what, when were you drafting? I said, well, I was the second pick in the 1986 draft but behind Bo Jackson. But actually, Bo Jackson didn't end up playing in the National Football League. He ended up playing baseball. So, yeah, so – I will I will take that without a doubt, and I appreciate Gavin for putting that out there and really just acknowledging that. So, props to Gavin. Yes, sir. So let's go back to those nineties real quick, and then we're going to uh, tee up uh, this game on sa- on Sunday because Tony's all in on this. T- Tony Tony and I were talking about this. He is totally clued in on this game, Eric. But let's go back to the nineties real quick because I was with you guys at yeah. all those. 49ers, Cowboys, playoff games. Tony's dodging my questions about the uh, the, the fun, wild nights. I just, just, just a little something, Tony. Anything well, which, to. Which night, though? I mean, there was a lot of. <laughs> it was nonstop, I, man. We got I mean, some White I, House I'm stories. write a book, so they're going to be like a chapter. Hey, first of all, there wasn't a White House. There was Tony's house. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right. What about. I mean, take us. Take us. Okay, in. wait, 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 wait. Let, let's build up well, to I'm it. I'm sorry, Chris. I had. I, we got pumped up. Let me interrupt you, buddy. We got to <laughs> surgically discuss this because we don't want nobody to get in trouble. Like he said, there was a statute of limitations kind of thing. But let's put it like this: since you want to talk decadence or fun or whatever, <laughs> okay? So Tony played in the first two Cowboys versus the 49ers NFC Championship games in the '90s. One won those games. It was first one was in San Francisco. The second one was in in Dallas. Won both of those games. Went to the Super Bowl, got two rings, right, Tony? Yeah, absolutely, brother. Then Tony was a free agent after that second Super Bowl win. He signed with Kansas City, and I'm minding my own business at the third NFC Championship game in San Francisco the night before when my phone rings, and it's my boy Top Cat. And he got a limo. (laughs) And, Tony, I'll let you tell what you can for that because Tony not the night before that game because he wasn't in the playoffs. The Cowboys were, but the Chiefs didn't make it. Oh, okay. You know, okay. All I know is that we're in the same limo, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you know, just to be transparent, so the, the, the woman I've been married for 25 years, that was my face, my, my first, not face, my first legitimate, you know, when you, like, you, you take, a, you know, someone out, you just want to impress. I say, hey, you know what? And my wife's name's Tamara. I said, let's go out, let's go to the – Let's go out to a game. So what game we're going to? Because my, you know, my wife's a Buckeye and everything. And I wonder. So let's go to the NFC Championship game. You don't know me. You, you didn't know me before this moment when the Cowboys are playing San Francisco. But we're going to go out there and hang out. So you're right. I mean, it was one of those, uh, you know, the, the rock star moments, the limos, and just everything we do. We and hit I every bar. Said, hey, Top Cat, come on in the limo. Let's hang out and meet Tamara. So we actually watched the Cowboys. In the NFC Championship, I wasn't playing it, but it ended up working because uh, 25 years later, I'm still with the same woman. I, you know, sometimes I got to pinch myself. I'm like, "What are you doing?" But she was very impressed on it with that game. Although we didn't win that game, we ended up, you know, the 49ers ended up winning that game. But it was one of those moments I can go back and like reflect on. But hey, Chris, as you know. We we spent some time together, brother. Yes, we did. We've, we've enjoyed some. Both teams had fun. Some, uh, Both success. teams played hard. 
Absolutely. And by the way, I did not mind winding up being the chaperone that night. And y'all wind up getting married. <laughs> <laughs> That's legendary stuff. It's Tony Casillas, former Dallas Cowboy, uh, with us here in the nosebleed seats. All right. So, I mean, Tony, take me into one of these Super Bowl parties, man. I mean, you win the Super Bowl. I mean, what is uh, what is the, the party-like atmosphere uh, when you get a ring on that finger? Well, let me just tell you, I, I, I think that you – you know, you look at the Cowboys playing the 49ers off of the, obviously this, this weekend, the wild card game. You know, it, it's, it's, it's great that you have the matchup, but it's all about what it represents. You know, when we played them, it was all about going to the Super Bowl. But the, the thing about the, the identity and the thing that you always take in the, on your resume is that you played on the Cowboys. The only that you played on was very symbolic in history of playing on a Super Bowl team. And that's something that, it's hard to explain, especially you get in the younger, you know, generation. But if people don't forget, you know, there's a there's a lot to be said for getting old and you know people moving on. But people do not forget history, and when you have the rings on, yeah, it's like we'll get the you know it's a great way to start a conversation and talk to the younger generation. But as we know, and, and that's the people that, that, that resonate with everyone. It's like something. It's an accomplishment. And I'm not I'm not joking you. The, the the things that we experienced back in the nineties and the things that we still like move forward to and people are mad, that's irreplaceable. And so the only thing I could give advice to the modern day player that plays in this Dallas, especially in the Dallas Cowboys, as big and as celebrity are now and the things that you're exposed to, just you know, put that notch on your belt to be able to go out and just continue and to win a game. The symbolic to get a chance to play in an NFC Championship because that will never, that will never fade, and that's the best way I can say. It. And you know, I, I, I'm, I, there's a lot of statute of limitations, a lot of things that I'm a, that that we could talk about and laugh about. But it was it, it was something that you weren't entitled. To. It came to you, like Chris said, the experiences and accomplishments and what you did and the, how you did it. That's what identifies you, and that's where we'll do just with the players and the organization. That's what they're still hanging on. That's what you know. That's how Jerry's built this empire based on what the Cowboys did before, and not what they're doing now. Exactly. As a matter of fact, I mean, just to circle back to the 49ers because that's the game that's coming up this Sunday, and to give everybody the idea of how big those games were in the 90s. Eric, I'm telling you, the Cowboys versus the 49ers. That was really like the Super Bowl. The AFC champion was like an afterthought. Whoever won between the Cowboys and 49ers was like, oh, that team was going to win the Super Bowl. It's just a matter of whoever the AFC put out there, whether it was uh, Buffalo, whether it was uh, uh, Pittsburgh, or whether it was the, the, the Chargers. Whoever won that game those four years, that's from the NFC, that was your champion of the Super Bowl. So let's fast well, forward. Go ahead, Tony. No, here's here's the thing, Chris, and I, you know, when you called me, you're fired up because we talked a lot of different things about whole nuances and you know what you know is kind of the things going to happen this weekend. But yeah. the AFC was more known for a finesse, for, for finesse conference, mm -hmm. and it's like when you played the AFC, it was more finesse, and the NFC, and especially in the NFC East back then, it was just all about black and blue. We're gonna. You know, we're going to run the ball on you. We're going to play. We're going to play bully football. And so when you play the AFC team, it's more finesse. And so we knew that the physicality, we we're going to have an issue with that. I mean, we're going to just, we're going to be, we're, we're going to be ready for that. But that was kind of the reputation. Obviously, that's kind of obviously changed somewhat. But that's the way that, that was the culture back then. We knew when, when people played the AFC teams, they knew, it was, look, it's going to be tough. We got to get ready because they're going to bring the. It's going to be a UFC fight. Oof. You're going to be, you're going to know the aftermath of that, and that's what we that's what we wanted to inflict. And, and you know, you talk about imposing your will. That's what we did. Tony Casillas with us here in the nosebleed seats. Well, uh, this is going to be a pretty physical outing on Sunday. That is something that uh, we know the Niners are bringing to the table. What sticks out to you about this particular matchup, Tony? Well, I think it's you, you, both both. Both teams, they have great defenses, but the 49ers, and you look at, I mean, if you do you look at the forensic part of it, you look at how, you know, they're, they're built up front. I mean, they, both they get after the passer. I mean, they got extremely deep, and, you know, they're 
the number three defense in the NFL, total defense. They play the pass. They play the run. So they do a lot of things. So this is a game where we haven't seen, and when Chris and I talked about this earlier, you know, an offense that can run the football. And I don't know how they can, if they're going to be able to flip that switch. I don't. I, it may be too late for that. But that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to come down mono a mono. Who wants it more? And it is kind of like an old school, as I've alluded to, like a dogfight, like getting down in the trenches and being able to win those matchups. Because when Dak Prescott has to get back, you know, in, in, in you know, in, in downs where it's, you know, the distance where he has to make the plays. That's what they do, man. They rush the pass. That's what they get it did against Matthew Stafford. That's how they won the game. They pressed him twenty eight times. They will hit him. And so that's the when I when I look at that, that's the only thing that I'm concerned with is a matchup against the offensive line versus their defensive line and their defensive front, because they are really, really good and they're deep and they're talented. Let's flip it on the other side because you're talking about the defensive lines. People may not know this, but, man, you still have records in Atlanta stopping the run. I mean, you were an interior lineman that not only did his job well in Dallas, but when you when you were younger in Atlanta, I mean, those records are still there. What do you think the Cowboys hey, Chris, need to – Can I tell you something, though? Mm -hmm. Who holds the postseason record or in a single game for sacks in a, in a playoff game? Would it be Top Cat? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Hey, we're gonna go to run stop. I just, I just thought I'd just like toot my horn. Anyway, yeah, that's what I'll, you do. Run stop. Well, For those who that. don't know, and, and by the way, let me. That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm setting you up. Not just sacks, but the runs. But we already know that the 49ers are gonna try to run the ball down the Cowboys' throat, and they're gonna do all kinds of pre-snap motion, RPOs, everything you can think of. Running uh, wide receivers playing running back. You know how to stop the run. You know how to get the sacks. What must that Cowboys defensive line do? You've got. You got Micah there as well. You got Tank Lawrence. You got Randy Gregory. You got Gilmore from the Boomer Sooners. I mean, come on. What do they need to do? Because what would you do? Because you were one of the best of the best. Well, here's a prime example. When you play, when you're when you're in the playoffs, there's guys that are going to do things that you didn't expect. And as I just alluded to, you know, you know, getting three sacks in a game in the playoffs, there's a certain energy, there's a certain time you step up. And regardless of, you know, everything's on the line. You, know, you, you you lose and you go home. And those are the guys that step forward, whether it's, we, we know Mike is going to show up. You know, we, we, you know, the guys that we expect to show up, but there's going to be guys that you, you haven't heard before. Uh, let's say, you know, Neville Gallimore, just, yeah. I, I don't know, a guy that just has to, to, to really, because that's all we hear about. But mm -hmm. those guys, if that's what they've been doing. Doris Armstrong. for the year. That's yeah. what they're going to have to do. Towards the you know, Armstrong. So it doesn't really matter, you know. It, it's the guys that you haven't heard about, the role players. It doesn't matter. That's what tests you. That's what tests really good players, and that's how you make your mark. And, you know, for me, that's what they're going to have to do. I mean, it's going to be consistent. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, to me, besides Tom Brady, is the most, you know, the, 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 the most beautiful man in the NFL. But <laughs> what they need to do is, like, Jimmy get Jesus. after him and – Dave Samuels. I mean, they have playmakers on that team that are play. They're going to make plays. So it's up to them. It's like it all comes down to the, you know an hour before the game. It's like what are we going to do? We we don't need to worry about what we did 17 weeks ago. We got to realize what we did. We're going to get ready to do now. And if those guys collectively, that's how you're measured, man. We don't want to hear about. It. Everybody forgets about what you did in the regular season. It's what you did in the postseason. Hey, real quick, Tony. About all the everything we talk about. That's that's what it's all made. That's what this is all about. I've listened to you, and I swear to God, you sound like Mike Tyson. This is what Mike Tyson said: Everybody got a plan to get punched in the mouth. Physicality. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It is going to be a physical game. Now, what is the uh, what's the gut feeling here on this one? High scoring, low scoring. Cowboys getting the dub, uh, going down to the wire. What do you think, Tony? Well, I mean, I, I guaranteed the win, so I, I, I like. I think the Cowboys will win, and, and and hopefully the Eagles will upset. You know, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so would be great to get that game back here. I think they're going to win. I, I really, for all the people out there that aren't really convinced, for some stupid reason, that Dak Prescott isn't one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He's going to show that this weekend. With that, I think I, I got the Cowboys winning. I, I think it's going to be 24-17, and, 
And I think that I think it's in a game that that's really going to they're, they're going to pivot and hopefully their offense will get back to what they need to do. I'm not sure about them running the football, but I think Dak Prescott. This is what you get paid for, man. You get you go out there to to, to make your team the one that's going to represent. So I I like him winning twenty four seventeen. Yeah. I love it. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time. Man. And that's a real treat for us, man. Go Cowboys and have a great weekend. Up, TC. Hey, thank you guys. I really appreciate it.